Told you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nabi Podcast. I'm your host, Sani Nabi. Um, this is going to be the uh, post review and uh, reaction video to UFC 249 that uh, just happened this past weekend on May 9th. Uh, first event in a couple months, so um, it was a stacked card, you know, mainly because of that. And uh, yeah, a lot of interesting shit happened. So, uh, last episode, uh, you know, if you watched the um, the preview and prediction video that I did for the event, um. It wasn't, you know, with a camera, mainly because uh, when I tried to record it. Motherfucker really got to start mowing the goddamn lawn right now. Right when I start fucking recording. Mother. A few moments later. Let's get this shit going. Before I get started, though, really quick, want to give a quick shout out to my three sponsors. Starting with... Champs Boxing Club. They're in my local boxing gym located in Danbury, Connecticut. Um, if you're local or, you know, even around the area like New York, Massachusetts or something, come by. Stop by if you're looking for a new gym, want to, you know, try him out. Stop by, look for AJ, tell him I sent you. He'll get you all set up and taken care of. Amazing gym, amazing people. You can't go wrong. Next up, my man Smokey Hash. He uh, produces CBD products uh, located in California, but he can ship all over the world. Products ranging from oils, edibles, uh, anything you could really ask for, pretty much. You know what I mean? Anything you could think of. Shoot him a message on Instagram at SmokeyHash LLC. Um, you know, shoot him an idea of what you might want created, and he'll definitely whip that shit up for you. He can make anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, go on Instagram, uh, look him up, tell him I, uh, tell him that I sent you, and he'll definitely get you all taken care of. Last but not least, TK's uh, American Cafe. They are my local sports bar. Um, home of the best wings in town, uh, you know, arguably in, Conne in all of Connecticut. And I say it all the time, could be the best wings in the fucking world. You never fucking know, though. But, um, yeah, if you're ever in town, stop by uh, TK's American Cafe. Uh, you know, amazing food, not only wings, but the wings is, you know, they're what really put them on the map. Over 70-something flavors, I believe, now. And growing all the time, as they always think of some new shit. Um, yeah, if you're, ever, if you're ever in town, want to try some wings or some, you know, just some great food and hang out at a, you know, a family-orientated spot. And, you know, that could definitely get a little rowdy with the sports. Rowdy in a good way, though, you know. Um, great environment. If you want to come by, stop by. Eat up, man. Good food, good people, great service. You know what I mean? All you could ask for in a restaurant. But, alright, so, UFC 249, um, it was a dope card, man, uh, so before I even, you know, start doing my, like, reaction to the, um, to the event itself, I'm gonna go up the, uh, up the card, and, um, you know, say the, um, the outcomes and whatnot, so to start the event off, it was a light heavyweight bout between Ryan, St uh, Ryan Spann taking on Sam Alvey, and um, Ryan Spann won that by a split decision. After that, it was a featherweight bout between Bryce Mitchell, who took on Charles Rosa. And uh, Bryce Mitchell won by unanimous decision. And I gotta say, Bryce Mitchell is very fun to watch. Holy shit. This kid, man, he's, he's fucking nice. This kid got some championship potential, man. Fucking, um, he's very well-rounded. And on the ground, he's like, he kind of reminds me of Ryan Hall, but um, Ryan Hall is like, you know, he's, that motherfucker's on a whole other level. But Bryce Mitchell, though, he, this fucking kid's ground game is nice, dude. He almost set up the twister like three times in this fight. And he just, you know, finished his last fight with the twister. And I believe in UFC history, there's only two twister finishes, if I'm, uh, if I could, um, you know. If I can remember correctly. But regardless, fucking dope. Bryce Mitchell, uh, you know, props. And I can't wait to see you fight again. Um, all right, to kick off the um, prelims that was, uh, that was on ESPN, it was a rematch at welterweight between Nico Price versus Vicente Luque. Holy shit, dude. This fight was fucking bananas. 
Luke won this fight by a TKO in um in round three with a doctor stoppage because uh Nico's eye could not fucking open for shit. The doctor tried and did like uh the shot that um that Luke landed that dropped uh Nico right at the end. I, it was either that shot or the follow up, you know, uh, jumping, diving hammer fist that Luke landed. But whatever it was, it was one of the two. Right when he landed it, Nico dropped, and it just swelled up right away, dude, right away. And it was it was over from there pretty much. Um, great stoppage because dude could not open his fucking eye for shit. And knowing Nico, he definitely wanted to fight through it, but definitely a good stoppage. Um, if you didn't see the fight, go back, if you have, um, ESPN Plus, go back and watch that shit, that shit was ridiculous, I knew in my, uh, preview episode, I didn't break it down, but I talked on it a little bit, and I knew that this fight was gonna be a lot more crazy than the first time they fought, um, these dudes are fucking androids, it's fucking ridiculous the shots that these motherfuckers took, and all, every round, every fucking round, they just went back and forth, but, um, yeah, me and my boy Pat, we was watching it, and literally the last two minutes hit of the fight, once it, you know, once it, um, got to the last two minute mark in the third round, I looked at him and I said, dude, if one of these motherfuckers don't get dropped in this last two minutes, that'd be fucking nuts. And, like, not even maybe 14, 15 seconds later, that shit happens and he gets, and Nico gets dropped. But, um, amazing fight. I hope they got the fight of the night. Nope, they did not. That's fucking stupid. Come on now. What the fuck? That ain't right, man. I'm gonna move on before I lose my shit. But yeah, Vicente, he won that by TKO in round three, Dr. Stoppage. Uh, after that, it was a woman's strawweight bout between Carla Esparza taking on Michelle Watterson. And Carla Esparza won that by a split decision. I personally thought Michelle Watterson won. Um... But I will also be honest, I, you know, was kind of in and out of the fight. Um, you know, I was hanging out with my people and, you know, we were having conversation and shit. So it wasn't really the fight I was paying attention to. But from what I saw, I thought um, Watterson won. Uh, after that fight, it was a heavyweight bout between the returning Fabricio Werdum taking on Alexio Linick. And Alexio Linick won this fight by a split decision. And holy shit, dude, I... I, I thought Werdum was going to win this fight, but um, Alexi came in this fight to do just that, which was fucking fight, dude. He had no submission, uh, you know, game plan in mind. He did not have a fucking plan to do no damn submission this fight. Um, he came in just trying to take Werdum's head off, bro, from the beginning to the end. I, I could not believe it because that's not how Alexi fights, you know what I mean, for the most part. He has, like, 50-something wins, I believe, or maybe 60 wins. He has a shit ton of fights, I know that. But um, out of all his wins, though, majority of them are submission. Like, 90% of his wins are by submission. So I did not see this shit coming. And where Doom, he's returning off of um, a couple years suspension, uh, you know, from popping for steroids and shit. But uh, honestly... Yeah, you could definitely tell he's off the roids uh, in this fight. Uh, you know, he landed some good shots. He landed some really uh, good knees in the clinch, which he's known for. Um, and he attacked a uh, couple submissions. Um, he tried to transition from a rear naked to an uh, armbar a couple times. But, um, you know, like I said, Alexi Olenek, he's no slouch on the fucking ground. So, you know, he, um, he was able to get out and, um, you know, fight back up. And just fucking completely just start throwing bombs at uh, Fabricio all over again. Insane. But, um, yeah, Alexi won that by uh, split uh, by a split decision. Um, after that, it was the featured prelim bout, which was a rematch between Anthony Pettis. Oh, uh, this was at welterweight, too. It was a rematch versus... Uh, oops, losing my mind real quick. <laughs> it was a rematch between Anthony Pettis taking on Donald Cerrone at welterweight this time, the first time was at lightweight, um, Anthony Pettis won this by unanimous decision, um, I, I agree with the decision, honestly, uh, that was definitely a fight that I paid attention to, of course, 
And, uh, you know, from what I saw, I, I thought Pettis was landing the better shots, the, you know, more volume with his combos. And, um, you know, Cerrone, he was, he was the aggressor, like, pushing forward. But, you know, as he was pushing forward, he was just getting pieced up. He was definitely landing his shots, too. And, um, you know, when you look at the numbers of the strikes, it's very even. Anthony Pettis, it shows that he only landed one more uh, significant strike. Uh, then Cerrone, uh, Anthony Pettis landing 63, Cerrone landing 62. But um, if you watch the fight, it's I I just saw more you know clean shots by Pettis. You know, um, Cerrone landed a mean head kick, which I thought that uh, that was gonna fucking at least stun Pettis, but it was not the case. He ate that shit and just kept on coming. Uh, Pettis won by unanimous decision. It could have been a split decision, um, but you know, I thought uh, I thought Pettis won that shit. Getting a little fucking cold down here. I don't want to turn the fucking heat on. Have the fucking sound going in the fucking mic. So I'm gonna put my goddamn hoodie on and look like a fucking fool real quick. But <laughs> alright. Uh the main card though, it was um it started off with a heavyweight bout between Greg Hardy taking on Jorgen DeCastro. And uh Greg Hardy won that fight by unanimous decision pretty solidly. Um, and we'll get into it as, um, uh, you know, moving forward when I, uh, break the episode down, when I break the, uh, main card down, because in the preview episode, that was all, um, that was the only fights that, uh, you know, I gave my predictions for, but, um, all right, after that, it was a featherweight bout between Calvin Kater, uh, Kater, <laughs> in the last episode, if you saw, I kept pronouncing his fucking name wrong, apparently, but I could have sworn I heard people calling him Qatar, so I was calling him Qatar all last episode. But Calvin Cater took on Jeremy Stevens um, in a featherweight belt, and um, Cater knocked uh, Jeremy Stevens out in round two with a vicious elbow. Uh, it was so fucking quick, and um, the uh, the scenario where it happened, fucking it, so much was happening real quick, you know, leading up to it. And the shot landed so quick that I thought it was a fucking right punch that um that did the damage. And then you saw the uh, replay and in slow motion. You see it was a fucking elbow. Fucking ridiculous. Um, it was kind of like when DC knocked out um, Stipe the first time uh, when they fought. I It happened so quick I thought it was an elbow. But it was actually a punch. This shit is the opposite. But almost, you know, around the same... Um, same situation, but, um, all right, after that, though, it was a heavyweight bout between Francis Ngannou taking on Jairinzo Rosenstruik, <sighs> not really much to break down, but, um, yeah, Francis, he won that fight by KO in round one in 20 seconds, yep, so, uh, after that, it was the co-main event, which was the, um, uh, bantamweight title bout between Henry Cajudo taking on former champ Dominic Cruz, and uh, Henry Cajudo won that by TKO in round two with a knee and uh, follow-up strikes on the ground. Um, after that, it was the um, main event, which was the interim lightweight title bout between the uh, interim champion Tony Ferguson taking on Justin Gaethje. <laughs> and uh, Justin Gaethje won that by TKO in round five. I fucking told you, motherfuckers. But all right. So we're going to go right into um, the main card and uh, break down those fights. And uh, I'm going to give my thoughts and my reaction to, um, you know, to the bouts. So the night started with the heavyweight bout between Greg Hardy and uh, Jorgen DeCastro. Uh, my prediction was Greg Hardy winning by either TKO or, you know, a decision. Um, I thought Greg Hardy was, you know, more so going to win by a knockout because... You know, he's a much bigger fighter, and if you watch this fight, you could clearly see how much bigger this dude was against uh, Jorgen. Fucking insane, dude. I never, re I never really realized how big Greg Hardy was until, you know, watching this fight. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, Jorgen, he had his moments um, more so with leg kicks, and uh, that was pretty much it. You know, he tried to throw his bombs, but, you know, his reach was, you know, his reach isn't the longest, and every time he tried to throw Greg, you know, he would use his, um, size advantage 
to, uh, you know, keep the distance and just slip right out of the way and, you know, circle around and just get right back in front of him. But he just made sure to not stay in front of him, you know, for too long at a time. And uh, his head movement was pretty good, you know, for a big dude like that. He has some pretty good uh, reaction times, you know, um, as he should being a fucking former NFL player. But uh, but yeah, um, you know, my preview episode, I said if Greg Hardy can, you know, uh, adapt his uh, his athleticism, you know, and you know, mix it in with his fighting, he could be a complete problem. And uh, this fight, it showed his athleticism showed. Uh, he even threw a fucking head kick. I didn't expect that, but uh, yeah, it's he. It's showing that he's evolving. You know, little by little, though. It's it's not leaps and bounds, but you could tell that he's definitely learning every single every single day, and uh, every fight he's you know he's showing something new. Um, this fight, it, he has very good head movement, is what I saw. Um, you know, not the smartest head movement as he's you know moving around with his hands down and shit, but with someone like Jorgen De Castro, uh, with the shorter reach. And, uh, you know, uh, by a big amount, you know, uh, the difference in reach, I mean, it was a lot easier for him to get out of the way, you know, uh, because this dude is swinging up, uh, Jurgen's swinging up at, um, at, uh, Greg Hardy as Greg Hardy's, you know, looking down at this motherfucker. So, you know, moving out of the way from those short punches, it'll be a lot simpler, but, um, yeah, Jorgen's best, uh, his best strikes were just leg kicks, and <laughs> up until I think it was the second round, I guess, uh, Greg Hardy said he heard DC, because it was an empty arena, so, you know, you could hear everything in that bitch, I guess he heard DC on commentary saying that, oh, he needs to check these leg kicks, blah, 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 I don't know why he had to hear DC to, uh, you know, know to do that, <laughs> but he said after he heard DC say that, that's when he started checking the leg kicks, and, um, one of the, uh, checks, uh, happened to hurt De Castro, and from that moment on, he stopped throwing those leg kicks, and that's when Greg Hardy started really doing his thing, but, uh, yeah, pretty solid victory for Greg Hardy, congrats to him, and, uh, we'll see who he fights next, if I were to put him up against somebody, I'm not exactly sure, I'd have to, you know, go down the, the rankings, uh, I don't know if I'd give him a top 10, you know, fi uh, you know, 5 through 10 ranked fighter, not yet, maybe one more unranked dude, and then maybe give him, like, number 13 ranked, and go from there, and see what happens, but, uh, yeah, after that, though, it was the, um, featherweight bout between Calvin Cater, taking on Jeremy Stevens, and, uh, yeah, dude, this, I, I predicted this shit down to the fucking T, bro, fucking Cater's boxing is so clean, bro, it's nuts, nuts his combos and you know uh the way he times it and you know the uh his head moving the way at every time he throws his combos he gets right out of the fucking way right after help he was popping jeremy with like uh two shot combos and right after that uh second shot you could see jeremy getting ready to fucking load up and throw over the top and cater saw that shit a mile away he would pop him with his shots and get right out of the fucking way fucking uh Jeremy, he, you know, he, he had his moments, of course, as he usually does, he even outstruck, uh, Cater in this fight, um, you know, before he got finished, but he was getting hit with the more, um, you know, significant shots, in my opinion, uh, not really the more significant shots, but the shots that really mattered, you know, he, uh, Cater was just putting these shots together, and, uh, Steven just, he just could not figure him out, you know, uh, Stevens was just doing what he does, which is, you know, load up, uh, aim for the target, and just go for the fucking finish, and, you know, try to land that fucking bomb and finish it from there, but he just could not, uh, you know, he just could not find that, that perfect shot, because Cater, like I said, he just, Cater, he would just land, in my opinion, he was landing the shots that mattered, you know, he was, uh, putting them together, and every time he was throwing his combos, he was landing, uh, Jeremy Stevens, he was just, you know, pushing forward, and like I said, he outlanded Cater, but he didn't land the fucking shot that really, you know, changed the fucking outcome of the fight. Um, other than that, you know, in the first round, Jeremy Stevens almost, uh, you know, doubled the significant strikes um, going against Cater. And um, but, you know, like I said, he didn't have enough time uh, in the second round. That's when Cater picked it up and really started fucking putting it together. And in, one, in the sequence where it ended, that's when Jeremy got a little too close. 
uh, very fucking close because that's when Calvin landed that fucking elbow. And um, quick as shit, dude. You got to fucking look at that. You got to look it up, you know. Um, I don't think I might just put like a quick clip of the fucking of the ending of it. But I obviously I can't put full highlights because, you know, that she's going to get taken down. Um, but yeah, fucking Cater is a beast with his fucking hands, man. This dude is a monster. Uh, majority of, um, Jeremy Stevens' attacks, though, it was, you know, leg kicks, you know, it was, it was pretty much half and half, actually, um, 57 significant strikes, uh, 24 was to the head, and, uh, 24 was, um, to the leg, it was, yeah, it was, it was literally 50-50, but, um, yeah, uh, Cater, on the other hand, uh, you know, 32 of his, um, 113 significant shots, was uh to the head uh 12 was to the body and uh eight was to the leg and um this fight pretty much went uh, you know exactly how i predicted it uh these both motherfuckers just gonna bang out no takedowns uh cater actually went for one takedown so and i did say if any of them go for a takedown it's gonna be cater <laughs> but uh yeah he didn't he didn't get the takedown but he did go for it but um yeah, it was, it was a good fight. It was a fun fight. Very fun. But, uh, yeah, Cater, he was able to fucking get close and, you know, uh, sucker Jeremy into a brawling sequence and just land that fucking brutal fucking elbow. I, you know, I didn't, I, I said in the preview episode, I didn't think it would be a good idea if uh, Cater, you know, uh, you know, got into a quick brawl and, you know, gets clipped. But he didn't even give Jeremy, uh, you know, a fucking chance to really load up and, target properly because uh he just landed the you know the the shot that meant something first but yeah cater won that by tko round two i got that one right <laughs> and uh yeah the next fight though it was the um heavyweight bout between nganu taking on uh rosenstruik fuck dude <laughs> uh i picked francis to win by tko or ko in round one if it were to end in um you know, by knockout, or, you know, if it went to decision, I said it was going to be, it was going to end up being a boring fight, but it was the latter, um, Francis, I don't know why people go in trying to fight Francis the same way everybody else did that he knocked out, I don't fucking understand it, like, did these motherfuckers not watch the fight where he fought Stipe? Because that's how you beat him. It's... I, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, fucking 10 seconds, you know, the ref says fight. 10 seconds in, they're just... They're kind of feeling each other out, you know, just bouncing around. And then f once they hit the 15 second mark, they just like collide real quick. And Francis was the one who like moved in first. So as he moved in, he pushed um, uh, Jair Renzo back. And so Jairinzo's swinging, moving backwards. Stupidest thing you could fucking do against someone like Francis, who's fucking swinging, coming forward. And Francis, he swung maybe like seven, eight times, maybe. Maybe. And fucking landed six of them. Monster shots, dude. Holy shit. And, you know, Jairinzo even connected on one shot, but it didn't. it did not face Francis at all, you know. Francis just ate that, and that's what I said, man, I said, you cannot fucking throw shots and not expect Francis to just keep fucking throwing right after, because he don't give a fuck if he gets, uh, if he gets hit with a light shot or a fucking heavy shot, he's gonna fucking retaliate right after, right fucking after, so if you're gonna fucking punch, get the fuck right out the way, you know what I mean, but fuck, man, 20 seconds, Francis knocked this motherfucker out cold, out cold, bro, and Jair Renzo didn't even know what the fuck happened after the fight, you know, he was still confused as fuck, uh, like, right when he got to his feet and started, you know, getting his wits back, he was, like, just asking around, like, what the fuck happened, bro, it was one of those knockouts, um, shit, dude, it was, it was scary, bro, <laughs> and I was watching with my boy, and, um, it was, honestly, it was the first night that I drank, I'm not much of a drinker anyways, but that was the first night that I drank in, like, a month. <laughs> so, you know, I had a good buzz, and something was telling me before the fight, I don't know why, the, I don't know what the fuck, 
I don't know what it was. It was definitely the alcohol. <laughs> but something told me I was like, I don't know why, but I think Rosenstruik is going to pull it off. He's going to knock him out. That was my drunk voice. You like that? But yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. And then the fight started, 20 seconds in, boom, motherfuckers out, out, and it was eerie as fuck, bro, it was eerie and scary as shit, <laughs> mainly because it was an empty arena, so it was just dead, dead silent, dead silent, even the, even the, um, the commentators, DC, John Anik, and, um, who was the fucking third guy? Oh, Rogan, what the fuck am I thinking? Uh, yeah, they were fucking shook, dude. Shook. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know why people keep fighting Nganu the way Nganu wants them to fight. It, It's stupid. You're not gonna win in a fucking fight of hands with this man, you know? You're not. You gotta fight him uh, technically. You know, you gotta be technical with your approach. This was not technical at all. Rosenstruik, I, I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. I mean, honestly, he probably had a game plan. You know, he probably was trying, he probably was, you know, hoping to surprise Francis with, uh, you know, a crazy game plan of takedowns and, you know, mixing it up and shit. And, you know, once he saw Francis fucking blitzing, he was probably like, oh, fuck. And that's probably, you know, that's probably uh, the case. That's more so the case. Um, because you see a motherfucker like Francis charging at you. <laughs> Shit. But, uh, yeah. So Francis won that by KO, t uh, by KO in round one. Um, who should Francis fight next? Honestly, he's probably just a number one contender. There's not really anyone for him to fight right now, you know? Um, I honestly think him versus Curtis Blades fighting for a third time should happen. And, uh, I'm not just saying that because, you know, Curtis is my dude and, you know, I've interviewed him a couple times and, um, you know, we got a good relationship and whatnot. I, you know, the, if you've seen their first fight, it, it stopped with the doctor stoppage because Curtis's eye swelled up, but he was doing pretty good that fucking fight, you know, um, granted that was, um, Francis's first fight in the UFC. So he did, you know, he's, I don't even want to say he's progressed, but his, his striking has definitely uh, you know, um, tuned up a little bit, it got a little sharper, you know, um, Curtis, on the other hand, he's only gotten better, you know, um, and I think they should run it back just to make up for that first fight, the second fight, you know, when Ganu knocked him out, he clipped Curtis, that's what, that's whatever, but, f you know, to make up for the first fight, I think they should, you know, do it one more time, other than that, I'm not really sure who Francis should fight, he should, if that's not the fight to make, then he should probably just, wait, you know, wait to see what happens between DC and Stipe, if they even, you know, fight again, uh, you know, as we know, shit always happens between, uh, DC and Stipe, and, you know, shit, and shit just fucking, it, pa it puts it on pause, so honestly, if I was Francis, I would probably wait, and see how that plays out, and, you know, throw his name in the fucking hat for that, and, you know, if they're trying to make DC versus, uh, Stipe 3, and someone gets injured, Francis is right there, ready to go, but, um, yeah, so after that, though, it was the co-main event, which was the, uh, bantamweight title bout between Dominic Cruz taking on Henry Cajudo. Uh, this was the only fight out of the, f out of my predictions that I did not get correct. <laughs> and, um, in, you know, my last episode, I even said that I'm probably gonna be biased, and, you know, with my prediction when I said I picked Dominic Cruz, but, um, you know, because I'm a huge fan and whatnot. But I did say, I did fucking say that I would not be surprised if Henry won this fight. Um, <laughs> so, with that said, Henry won this fight <laughs> with a knee and follow-up punches in the second round. Um, honestly, Henry did so much better than I thought he was gonna. You know, I didn't think he was gonna, you know, fight as good as he did, pretty much. I thought Dom was just gonna, you know, just fight circles around this motherfucker, you know, uh, keep him at distance, and just piece him up with the jabs, and, you know, put him together, and, uh, you know, coast his way to victory, um, 
Yeah, no. <laughs> First round started, and Henry came in with the perfect game plan. I don't even know why I didn't think of it, but Henry came in with the perfect game plan of just chopping Dominic Cruz's legs up. Mean fucking leg kicks, dude. He was just ba like baseball bat swings type shit, you know what I mean? And like when the round started, Dom was, you know, on his feet, light on his feet, in and out, moving side to side. Uh, diagonally like he always does and once he um, started getting hit with the leg kicks you could see that he uh you could see he started feeling it and you know he wasn't as bouncy as he was uh you know in the beginning of it um and once uh henry saw that he just kept attacking those fucking legs man uh you know both these guys had their moments on the feet with uh with their punches and um you know head kicks i think uh henry even landed a fucking head kick um Henry even got a takedown. I believe it was in the, uh, I believe it was in the first round. But uh, as I predicted, uh, if he got a takedown, it it would be you know really hard to keep Cruz down, and that's what it was because he could not hold him down. Uh, Cruz got right back up, but right on, right back on the feet. Henry just kept attacking those fucking legs, and um, you know that was that was pretty much the story of the fight. And then in the second round, though, once it started, you uh, you could see like Cruz started you know. Uh, he like shook off the rust pretty much, you know what I mean? He uh he said he always says that ring rust isn't real, but you could tell from that first round and that second round. In the second round, he started feeling it, you know. He started he started getting back on his fucking feet, you know, moving exactly how he should, and he started you know putting his punches together too. Um, unfortunately, with fucking ten seconds left in that round, you know, he um he went in for one of those punches where he throws and then fucking ducks to throw the overhand right after but when he ducked henry timed a fucking knee going right up the middle perfectly perfectly as dominic ducked and landed that shit and it wobbled dominic sent him back and um you know sent him down and henry he, like the first punch henry um threw when he like ran right on top of him he landed that shit nice flush and you know dominic kind of it didn't look good you know dominic was just face flat pretty much and as it was happening live i i didn't think it should have been stopped you know what i mean um especially with two seconds left in the fucking round i feel like it should have you know kept going and you know let the round finish out but um after the fight ended and they showed the slow motion replay it showed that dominic did not cover up once not once you know what i mean he was like trying to get up and push up but he wasn't like he wasn't like up upright you know what i mean his his face was still down hands on the ground and he's just getting punched you know what i mean uh regardless if some of the punches landed or not he was still not properly defending himself and i hate to fucking say it but it was it it was a good stoppage you know i hate to say it cuz i wanted every bit of me wanted dom to win this fucking fight um but yeah man fucking I thought at first I thought it was a shit stoppage, but you know after watching the slow motion replay, it was a good stoppage. Um, it was kind of weird and eerie how similar the stoppages were between um you know uh, when he fought when Henry fought TJ and when he fought Dominic. Very similar, very weird and very similar. Um, you know I said like Henry, you know he could catch Dominic in like a flash knockdown kind of thing. Uh, you know, like he did TJ, but I said that's, that's, you know, not likely to fucking happen, fucking jinxed, I should have knocked on the goddamn wood, man, I bought this fucking wood table for fucking times like that, <laughs> where I make fucking, you know, bold statements, and I can just knock on the goddamn wood, I ain't knock on fucking wood, <sighs> and it fucking happened, but yeah, um, a lot of people saying it was a bad stoppage, uh, I made up my mind, and I thought it was a good stoppage, um, but at the same time, with two seconds left in the fucking round, you should, probably should have just let it fucking ride, you know? Um, and like I said, Dom was just picking it up. He was just getting in the fucking groove and, you know, doing his fucking thing that second round. But yeah, Henry won. And Henry fucking retired after, uh, you know, in his interview with Joe Rogan in the in the cage. He um he said, you know, he, he did everything he wanted to do, this and that, and... He feels like he has nothing left to prove, so he's retiring. He wants to start a family and whatnot. <sighs> Fucking ridiculous. 
I don't know why fighters would be doing that. They find, like, a dying piece. They get fucking sprung and want to get them pregnant. And, uh, fucking, uh, I don't know. Not my business. But, um, anyways, yeah, he wants to do that. But, honestly, Henry's not a, he's not a stupid dude. And his management team is not stupid either. Um, this could just be a ploy, you know, for bigger fights in the future. You know what I mean? Uh, he could just easily take you know, a good amount of time off. You know, he's had his injuries, uh, you know, the last couple of years. What the fuck? He had his injuries the last couple of years. So, you know, it'd be good for the body to take uh, an extended amount of time off and just use this retirement tag, you know, as uh, as just a ploy to, uh, you know, make more money whenever he uh, decides to come back, you know. Because, of course, when he decides to come back, people will want to see because there's going to be a vacant title now and um people's going to want to see him you know if he wants to return we're going to want to see him fight whoever's going to be holding the belt at the time so do i think he's really retiring <laughs> no not at all not at all um like i said he's a smart dude he got a smart management team so yeah this motherfucker's not retiring that's no that's fucking foolish but all right going into the main event um, it was the interim lightweight title bout between the interim champion Tony Ferguson taking on Justin Gaethje. And Justin Gaethje won this fight by TKO in round five. <laughs> Told you, motherfuckers. Listen, man. I predicted this shit almost to the T. Um, I thought G Gaethje was going to win by knockout in the first or second round. Um, you know, I didn't think he had five rounds in him. I, you know, I thought he had just two and a half rounds and I thought he was going to get the finish in those first two rounds, but he, you know, he got the finish in, um, and right at the last round. Um, this fight was fucking nuts. This, this is the fight of the night of, you know, of course they're going to give them fight of the night because it was the title fight and the main event and whatnot. Um, I, I still think they should have gave out two fight of the nights, man. Once uh, Luke and Price, and uh, once the main event. But, anyways, um, yeah, this fight was fucking nuts, dude. From the opening bell, motherfuckers were just striking. I knew these motherfuckers were not gonna be going for takedowns like that. I knew this shit. Um, Justin was just landing bombs, man. Bombs after bombs. I like. Tony Ferguson's nickname is El Kakui, which is, um, which means the boogeyman, and holy shit, dude, did he live up to that fucking name this fight, because for five fucking rounds, man, this dude was taking the most hardest shots I've probably ever seen a motherfucker take, and just shake it off, he didn't even look like I phased him the first three rounds, and I'm just looking at my boy, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Because these are shots that Gaethje has been killing motherfuckers with recently. You know what I mean? And Tony Ferguson was... He ate maybe like... Fucking A, man. Maybe like... 70 to 80 fucking flush shots before they started really, you know, setting in. Um, I don't know how, dude. Props to Cho... Uh, props to Choney. Choney. Props to Tony for that chin, dude. Because he... Holy shit, man. Probably not the smartest, though, but we all know this. He's more heart than brains, you know? Eh, you know, matter of fact, this fight, he was more hearts than brains. You know, he's a very smart fighter, so I, I didn't mean it that way. Um, He's a technician, so, you know, uh, more heart than brains and, uh, you know, like, in the sense of doesn't know when to quit is what I mean. But, um, yeah, man, brutal, brutal. And Tony was doing his thing, though. The first two rounds, it was back and forth. Tony was landing his shots, too. And even in the end of the second round, he dropped um, he dropped uh, Justin with an uppercut. <laughs> it was a pretty funny sequence, too, because both of these motherfuckers, like, loaded up with a left uppercut. And they were, like, faking it. They were, like, winding it up. You know what I mean? It was some funny shit. Um, and, you know, Tony, with the longer reach, he just got there quicker. And, you know, he... he fucking nailed Justin right under the chin and dropped him um luckily it was right at the end of the round though you know what I mean for Justin luckily 
and um you know he was able to uh, you know get his shit back together in between rounds and um you know third round started excuse me third round got going and it was more of the same justin was just bombing him bro he was just fuck dude you gotta watch the you gotta watch this fight if you didn't see it the shots that tony took is fucking ridiculous unheard of man um i i really hope he's okay in all seriousness um but yeah wow he fucking took so many shots uh, without going down and then you know uh both of them was actually landing really good leg kicks but you know like i said in my preview episode justin's leg kicks are fucking insane you know he has one of the best leg kicks in the game and he needed to really use them shits and that he did man um you know you need your legs underneath you to uh you know be able to take shots uh to the chin and the head you know uh if you have a good base underneath you that's definitely going to help you know keep you uh you know keep you upright and keep you um all there you know but yeah uh, once justin like Justin was landing kicks all throughout the fight, but in the third round on is when he started really fucking landing the ones that really, like, started uh, sending Tony in circles. You know what I mean? He would land them, and Tony would fucking spin. Um, and Tony wouldn't move around as much after that, and he would just try to make it a boxing match. You know what I mean? And uh, that that was pretty much the beginning of the end. Um, fourth round, I believe, fourth or fifth round, uh, I looked at my boy, and I was like, he needs to stop, like, boxing and fucking throw a fucking mean-ass leg kick. And, like, 20 seconds later, maybe, like, 10 seconds later, he throws the fucking leg kick that, like, chopped Tony down and, like, brought him to the fucking ground. You know what I mean? Tony got back up, though, but that's when I knew his leg was done. And that's when Justin started fucking, you know, throwing up top again, uh, you know, as, right after he got Tony um, worried about the leg. Uh, he threw up top, fucking... Ugh, again more brutal fucking shots brutal fucking shots and tony was just eating them shits and then um uh justin landed a, a very stiff straight jab and that was the one that uh surprisingly was the one that really fucking uh shook up tony and right after he landed it you could tell like tony like the worst thing he fucking could have done was sh you know try to shake his head and like you know try to shake it off because you know that shit made him even more fucking dizzier, and, um, Justin just walked him down, uh, pushed him up against the fence, and fucking, just fucking molly whopped him, dude, hit him with, like, two more flush shots, and that's when Herb Dean came in and waved it off, and, um, yeah, man, I, like I said in the preview episode, matchups make fights, this was a horrible matchup, dude, Tony takes shots every fight, he gets hurt just about every fight, yeah, man, fucking, when he takes flush shots, like, very flush shots, he gets rocked, and, you know, he's in trouble, and this was the guy that throws nothing bl uh, but, you know, hard and heavy shots, and when they're flush, he knocks motherfuckers dead, I didn't think Tony was gonna be able to take as many shots as he did before, you know, before the fight ended, but god damn, did he, um, but yeah, man, fucking, I, I just knew this was gonna fucking happen, uh, a lot of the times, especially in sports and MMA, a lot of the times, history repeats itself, and when times, like, a big title fight is, like, supposed to happen, and, you know, some catastrophic shit happens, and the champion, you know, pulls out of the fight, and they make an interim title fight with someone coming in, uh, the challenger takes the chance, uh, well, not, not even the challenger, because Tony was the interim title um, title holder. But, um, you know, he was the one who took the chance by, you know, accepting the fight with Gaethje. And history repeats itself, man. When that fucking happens, usually the motherfucker taking the chance, who has everything to lose, loses it all. It happens a lot. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, man, I fucking, I knew it was going to fucking happen. And it, it just the matchup itself, it was a bad matchup, man. Tony gets hurt. This motherfucker hurts people. <laughs> this is this was the worst dude, man, that you could fucking get into a fight with. When you when you got a style, you know, like the the Mexican warrior style. You know what I mean? Who just there taking shots on the chin to give it back. Horrible game plan, man. 
Tony went for a takedown in like round five, four or five. He even tried to do like a, a Amrani roll. And he was he was already fucking stunned and shit. Like doing shit like that is, you know, going to make you more dizzy and fucked up. So not a good fucking decision with that. But yeah, just not a good decision in general with going for takedown so fucking late, you know. But and, uh, you know, he also... Uh, the day that he was supposed to fight Khabib originally uh, a couple weeks ago, I think another uh, three weeks ago, I believe. Um, I don't know why he did it, but he did the weight cut anyways, just to prove, you know, he's Billy Badass and he's there. You know, he's there. He's a businessman, blah, blah, blah. For what, man? For what? All that just took a toll on your body. You know, uh, could, I'm not I'm not saying that as an excuse. For why he got his fucking ass beat. Because clearly his body was able to fucking take all that fucking damage. You know what I mean? So it, it probably didn't take it probably didn't have that much to do with it. But you know what I mean? It's it was still a bad idea in my fucking opinion, you know. Um But yeah, man, it's pretty heartbreaking that uh Khabib versus Tony is we're gonna have to wait probably another fucking year, two years for this shit to get matched up again, because Tony's gonna have to you know, win, win his next fight, and probably by, you know, spectacular fashion, um, maybe you have to win two fights in a row, you know, and Khabib has to hold the title, very heartbreaking, but I've never seen a fucking fight so cursed, man, it's fucking insane, it's fucking insane, I don't, I don't get it, the MMA gods are really, really brutal with that one, man, heartbreaking, but, I predicted this one correct, motherfuckers. So, mm, to all you motherfuckers that uh, call me crazy. Matchup make fights, dude. You gotta look into the matchup. You can't just go off of, you know, remembering what you saw last fight. Uh, you know, of the fighter going against someone completely different than who's going against next. You know what I mean? You have to put all those fights together and see what, you know, the new opponent. You have to see what he does good. And, you know what I mean, see how Tony reacts to that in the past fights, you know what I mean, when someone does that to him. And from what I saw in his past fights, when he gets fucking rocked, he gets fucking rocked. And this ain't the dude to get rocked by, you know what I mean? Uh, and I even hate to admit it, like a, like a fight between Tony Ferguson and uh, McGregor, it's pretty much the same prediction I would give. First two rounds... I would give it to Connor, you know what I mean, by KO, and I hate to say it, because I hate that motherfucker, anybody who knows me knows I hate that motherfucker, I hate him, and I hate his casual ass fans, that give the goddamn sport a bad look, that's a story for another day, <laughs> but um, yeah, if Tony fought Connor, I'd pick Connor by KO in round one or two, um, if it went past that, it don't matter how long Connor has to prepare, he, his cardio is shot, you know what I mean, he don't take care of his fucking body outside of fighting, you know what I mean, so, yeah, he'll never fucking have great cardio, so fighting someone like Tony, if Tony could, you know, utilize head movement, not get into a fucking punch for punch fight, like he did this fight, and, you know, drag it on, get Connor tired, and then start piecing him up, Tony could win that shit, no fucking doubt, but, knowing Tony, he's gonna go in there trying to, you know, have something to prove, and try to outbox Connor. Not a good idea. You know what I mean? Um, that's a story for another day. I don't even know why I even got into that. But it, it, like I said, matchups make fights. That's why I got into it. But regardless, yeah, I don't really got much else to say. That was the uh, review and uh, the post review and uh, reaction video of UFC 249, Gaethje versus Ferguson. Shit. Uh, in a couple of days, what's today? Today is the 11th. On the 13th, on Wednesday, the next event is going to be uh, a fight night. And it's going to be headlined by uh, Danbury's own, my hometown. Mm. I should have done this episode yesterday, which was Sunday. And a little quick breakdown for that fight today. But, yeah, whatever. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um... There's another event on Saturday, which is Alistair taking on um, Walt Harris. I might do a quick breakdown for that. Uh, maybe Thursday or maybe Wednesday. 
but who knows. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. This was Nabi Podcast. I am your host, Sani Nabi, signing out. Everybody out there, stay safe, and I'll uh, see y'all next episode. Peace. <laughs>